down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors, experience revealed oh, with the Savvy shucks. Landlord. Ladies as your and gentlemen, host. boys and girls. You tuned in to what? What? The Savvy Radio Show. This is how we do it. We do it big. And I just bring the most random people, not only just random, but the most superstars worldwide in the United States of America. You know, I'm going to be straight up honest. I'm not a big fan of wholesaling, but I met, not that I hate wholesaling, but I met the greatest duo of wholesalers, these, this brother duo at the most random place at the most random time. And I just punked them. I was like, oh, you out. I don't even want to talk to you, homie. Like, let's not talk about real estate. And then, then one of them had to get sassy with me. Chris had to come, come correct with the cell phone. Let me show you my HUDs. And I was like, what? You just did 63000 on a deal? Okay, now you're at the level. Now you're at my level. Okay, and then he's like, oh, let me show you another one, 30-something. And ladies and gentlemen, let me, let me introduce the real deal. This is Frank and Chris Milan from Phoenix. And how I met these guys, there's a great group you need to be a part of. It's called the Millionaire Fast Lane or the Fast Lane Forum. You know I'm an avid uh, MJ DeMarco fanatic. I've read his books more than once. Yep, almost as much as the Bible. I've been set free multimillionaire because of him and his books. And we do this meetup once a year called the Millionaire Fast Lane Summit. It only attracts the OGs, the original, the people that are doing it. And these two gentlemen that I have on here, I'm just, I'm just amped the F up because they made it on the show. And welcome to the show, Frank. Welcome to the show, Chris. Tag team duo. Hey, hey, uh, hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for having us, Steve. All right, man, I'm, I'm excited. So let's just get dialed in. First of all, let's just clarify who you are. You guys are virtual wholesalers. So some people... Somebody may tune in for the first time. Like, what's that? First of all, virtual is that you guys are, you both stay in Phoenix, right? Yes. And you, right. and you wholesale and what markets do you wholesale? So we wholesale, we're in Phoenix, we're in Texas, we're in Phoenix, we're in Tucson, Houston, Dallas, Las Vegas, Atlanta, and Oklahoma City. Oklahoma uh, City, you're my backyard. I didn't even know you. This is why I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ran into these dudes at the bar and they're like, they're showing me deals in Oklahoma City, Tulsa. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so we're going to have you on the radio show. So let's, let's dial in. So first of all, how old are you, Frank? I'm 29. 29, killing it. Chris? 23. 29, 23. Okay. And so let's, where are you? Have you always been in Phoenix? You live there? You from there? Where are you guys from? I've been in Phoenix. Yeah, we've been in Phoenix my whole life, man. I was, I was born in Mexico, brought here when I was nine months. My parents brought me and been here ever since then, man. Stuck to it. And, you know, it's, it's a great city. Awesome. Yeah, and same so, here. So, I mean, you guys are relatively young, obviously entrepreneurs. And then not only that you're wholesaling, but you're wholesaling on a scalable, huge level. What inspired you? How'd you get in? And why did you pick real estate? Why didn't you do like everyone else on the Millionaire Fast Lane? They, they, they sell stuff, seems to be on Amazon or e-commerce. What made you pick real estate? And what's your influences? What's, what's funny, man? Sorry about that. Shoot. It, better be, it better be a wholesale call, homie. It is a wholesale call. <laughs> you need to have better systems yeah. and operations. <laughs> So I got my cell phone connected there, but no, back to the question, man. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's a really good question. Uh, we've been entrepreneurs our whole life. I've been, you know, my parents have been a business owner since, since very young. They've been testing a lot of stuff out too. My dad was a business owner, uh, you know, a while back. That's when it started. And my dad gave me the fundamentals. He was like, when I was young, I, I saw everybody wearing like, you know, these fancy shoes at school, Jordans, Nikes, and I wanted to be wearing that and having my own cell phone too. I saw like kids that were 13 year olds, years old, 13 year old with a cell phone. In reality, we don't need a cell phone at that age back in the day, and, but I wanted it, right? So I told my dad, hey, can I get this? And he always had, a, there was always food on the table, bills were always paid, he hustled, he, he's in, he's in, he was in construction. Now we built out a, a company for him and, and he's doing the jobs and everything, but he's on the floor where I'm going. Like he told me, you want to, you want to have that stuff, go bust your ass. So he said, I'm only going to provide the, the fundamentals, you know, what you need. For example, when I would go to the movies, 
uh, I would go with this one friend of mine and he'll get a hundred bucks. And my dad's like, no, you don't, you don't, you don't, no, you don't fucking need a hundred bucks. You just need it for your popcorn and your movie ticket. That's it. So that's where the ambition grew. I was like, man, I want to make more money. And that's where I started like doing, you know, looking how to, how to flip things. I would flip like CDs at the, where I was working at Jack in a Box. I would flip movies, you know, download torrents, download games, install them on people's um, platform, uh, cell phones. At the flea market? <laughs> did you sell stuff at the flea market? Yeah, <laughs> almost, almost. Did. I think I, I was... ran into you at the flea market. <laughs> trying to sell me some bootleg <laughs> CDs. <laughs> I was there, man, with Mexican cobijas, you know? Nah. But um, that's where it started, man. And I started looking into more, you know, and I would, I would flick play, PlayStations. I don't know if you remember the, the ring, you know, the Xbox had that ring of fire or whatever. Right. Fix those, give people 30 day warranty. And then uh, that's how I came across the book, man. I was like, you know, searching for, for books. And I came across the Fast Lane Millionaire book. Um, cool. Cracking the Code to Becoming a Millionaire. And that's it. It clicked. That book. And I tell my brother, I was like, I tell people, I was like, that book, you know, fucked me up. I was like, it woke me up. I was like, shit, you know, that's right. where it clicked. And I got, I did get into e commerce. Uh, I did do. Ex export hookah pens and iPhone cases from China, from Alibaba. And I was selling them while working construction. And I was getting eight to 10 orders a day, but I didn't want to run to the mailbox, to, to the mail, to the post office every day. So I waited three days before I had to, you know, run out there. Right. So long story short, after so many, after so many late shipments, I started getting negative feedbacks, negative feedbacks on eBay. They banned me for life. I can't sell on eBay for, for life. You know, my name's like wow. banned from there because I was shipping them late and it's very important for, for them. Reviews is very important. So, uh, but I was already starting into, uh, you know, e-commerce, which you just mentioned. But from there I moved ships and I started uh, flipping motorcycles. I flipped over 50 motorcycles. Wow. Uh, you know, I would buy them from, from a kid. And then I, I lived close to a college. So college kids were my most, uh, the, the buyers, you know, they, they, they would go, they had the money. They didn't even think about it. Pull the trigger, made 500 to 1500 bucks every time. Kept doing it, kept doing it, having fun. And then I was like, man, this is not scalable. Cause I remember, you know, I would go back to the book. I was like, let's start a business service business. I was trying to find out what, and I saw mobile detailing was kind of like, you know, I, I guess a good way to start. I bought a van, bought all the, the equipment. My brother would go with me, would detail semis. Uh, we would have clients, you know, on the monthly basis. But the heat here is brutal. You know, you're out there detailing cars at 120 degrees, drenched in sweat. One day I'm inside. A, it was actually, I remember the car. It was a Nacra. Um, I forgot which exactly that is. It was a Nacra, a, a, a white Acra, And I was drenched in sweat. I was like, man, this is not scalable. Yes, I can hire people, but it just has so many pain points. I, I, don't have a, I don't have a warehouse. It's just so much capital you need. Sold all that off, and then I got into real estate. So that's how I came across real estate. Before real estate, I wanted to become a firefighter, though. Huh. I went to paramedic, signed up. So, and your dad, he, he was always in construction? He was always in construction, so yeah. You, so you saw your dad working really hard in the heat, and then you saw him working on houses, and so... And okay, so that was kind of an, an eye opener. So that's where your work ethic came from is from your yeah. dad. Yeah. Right. But he's old school. He's he from Mexico. So he's old school. He's like my father in law. My father in law is Mexican. He's full blown from the jungle. And this dude oh. like never sleeps. I'm like, <laughs> does I'm like, dude, you gotta retire, homie. And he's still <laughs> sixty something years old. He's still working. I'm like, Damn. he don't need to work, but he just this is ingrained in him. But <laughs> so you got this crazy work ethic. That's just like, I want things. And you're, you're trying to figure it out with all these small, small, small side hustles from flipping Alibaba, which is pretty remarkable because I did that one time. But, you know, you can get in trouble. And then you will move on to these vehicles and then you learning how to sell all different types of people. What was the what you know? I want to know where did the real estate like? Did you did you meet somebody? And I mean, Phoenix is not an easy place to flip property. First of all, you guys have had horrible uh crashes uh the market was about five ten years ago i can't remember because i actually looked in phoenix for a while and it got puffery so big people were making so much money and how flipping houses in las vegas my my cousin flipped a house in las vegas and just made a killing and then it just collapsed and then it was like people were just like it was like carnage everywhere 
did you did you see people did you have did you get involved in groups like you can't just jump from one to the another there's got to be a transition and if your dad was out hustling who's the one that introduced you to that game the one that introduced me i read on books even though i read on mj you know it's 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 how can i say it's uh it's not a very fast lane but it was the vehicle that would provide me with becoming self-employed making you know decent chunks of money and uh, I came across when the market crashed. Okay, the market crashed. My, my parents, you know, had my, my dad bought his, our, par- our parents bought their house cash. Yeah. Market crash, man. You know, hustlers. The Hispanics, Ooh. man. They just, they just kill <laughs> like they pay cash. I love it. I, my, my, my wife's Hispanic, so I, you know, I can, I can, I, I can laugh, you know. <laughs> I'm just <Yeah. laughs> And the guy's debt free. I'm like, dude, let's leverage this out. But anyway, um, so, so, so they, so they, so you saw the, the crash happen and what happened? Yeah, they, we saw the crash happen. I didn't know much. I was very young, but I didn't know, you know, I would hear the crash, all this stuff. My dad lost his job. Hmm. You know, he, he, they cut his hours. He was side hustling, looking from, for, for contractors, you know, trying to get, trying to land jobs. So that time I remember that's what resonated. I, I know you said, how do you come across real estate? So the real estate agent that represented us, we went to a house, right? And he was a wholesaler. Not that I put dots together. He rolls up in a Jaguar, all blacked out, and the guy, you know, balling. And he's like, well, you got to submit 10000 above to be able to win this property. And I remember we kind of asked him if he was an agent, but he kind of, you know, went around that, that question. And we, we let that guy go because we saw he was a hustler. My dad saw it right away. He's like, yeah, I don't want to be dealing with it. Okay, that. hold on, hold on, homie. You're telling me you guys are trying to buy a house, your family's yeah. trying to buy a house, and you came across a wholesaler trying to yeah. sell you a house and he wanted ten thousand dollars obviously it was his assignment fee yeah to yeah. get this deal and so you kind of picked up the pieces like wait this ain't right yeah but that was your first taste of a wholesaler that was the first taste yeah that was the first taste. Hey, come on man we're trying to write you a book here man rags to riches <laughs> i mean these are you need to write this down you know these, yeah. the, these are these are moments where these are great chapters of your life where you know, like the sweat down, you know, 120 degree weather. Like, what am I doing? I can't scale this. Cause if you got hurt, you know, but I mean, I cannot wait to get into the wholesaling, how you guys are doing it now. But yeah. so, so you met this crazy dude with a Jaguar. So you, met- you said, Hey, <laughs> that's kind of yeah. crazy. A wholesaler, like general public, like, you know, in my world, there's wholesalers everywhere. Cause I'm an investor, right? That's who I talk to, but you guys were like a buyer of a property and you came across wholesalers, so you punked that dude, and then then what happened? So he knew he was cash, and then he was like, you got to submit higher. So my dad caught that, too, and he didn't like that. And we were like, we looked for, for – we asked a family member for an agent because they had just recently passed uh, – bought a property. Actually, it was a family member. So they referred us to – I believe his name was Jason, and that's why I started seeing, like, okay, well, Jason's self-employed. We made a commission. You know, I looked it up, and I asked him, hey, how – how hard is it to get your license? He said, you just got to go to school. How long is it? I think he said two months at that time. And that's where it stayed in my mind. And I didn't jump into real estate right away because I was still like flipping on e com I was still doing the e-commerce stuff. But down the road, when, when I had a little bit of chunk of money and, and I was a little bit older, because at that time I was like 18. But at this time I was like 20, 22, 20, 23. And that's when I pulled the trigger and, and uh, joined the school without thinking about it. But so, you went, so you went and got your real estate license? Yeah, I got my real estate license. Took me 16 times. You know, I finished the class. That's awesome. I, hate I, it. I took it and failed too. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't paying attention, man. I was working construction with my dad at that time. So you know what? Waking up at 5 a.m. and me being a young kid, not going to sleep till 12 or 1, being in class from 6 to 10 p.m., I was falling asleep most of the time, man. So. Uh, that's, I just, I love the work ethic. I mean, you know, people just want to be rich, right? They just, they just, they don't know that it's the work behind the scenes. Like I, you know, I was telling some of the day I had three jobs at one time. My mom did. I, I slept in my car, you know, just to, to survive. And, you know, I was homeless at one time. People are like, Oh, you a millionaire, man. It's not what you think it is. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, I never want to go back to construction. I was, I, I, I used to dig ditches. <laughs> like, I worked yeah. for a plumber for a whole summer. I was like, hell no, this ain't, this ain't the world I want to be in. Exactly. So you got your license. And so then you just try to, you just applied the same script of uh, flipping from Alibaba to, to real estate. It's just a commodity in your mind. You know, everyone needs real estate. Everybody's willing to buy it. And so that's just kind of the concept in your mind. 
And so you took yeah. this license. Then you probably got lied to somewhere about being a real estate agent, hanging your license somewhere, and you're going to be, you know, do, 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 it's just a job. Yeah. And so, then, uh, so tell me about your first deal, your first wholesale deal. First wholesale deal. So we, we did, you know, we did, we came, became an agent, but eventually I hopped in because I wanted to flip, flip houses. Okay. I started representing uh, buyers to pay my bills. Then I came across a wholesaler uh, in, on Instagram through hashtags, you know, cash buyers, investors. And this guy would get properties on the back in the day, would get properties under contract from the MLS, excuse me, to submit properties, uh, you know, submit offers. He got properties under contract and he was like, hey, can you come open up the house one more time? I go open up the house and I see that he was with more people and he was showing the house and talking about it like if he was the agent. At that time it clicked. I was like, yeah, this guy's reselling the property. But I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was called. So I didn't I didn't burst his bubble. I didn't screw up his sales. Like as long as I get paid, nothing else matters, you know. Okay, so you had a listing and someone dude was trying to sell your listing? No, I, I was, was representing the investor okay. on the MLS as a buyer. And he okay. would lock him up on the MLS. And then he would wholesale them. So that's why I saw it and I started researching. And, and our first deal was, our very first deal was a deal that I came across from a wholesaler. And I sent it to them and he gave me a $1,500 check just for sending him the address. That was the very first one. But the, uh, it was kind of like a referral fee. But so you, you, you started, I should, I, I should put that in your description. You were a little bird dog too. <laughs> Add that to your resume, homie. <laughs> I was a bird dog. I got fifteen hundred. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, like just because I'm forty six years old. You got what, Chris? How old are you, homie? Twenty three. Twenty three. And it's just like you, you are probably twenty years advanced, Frank. I, I I don't know. Just maybe it's because of technology. I mean, you were dropping hashtags. When you were dropping hashtags, I was like, oh, I didn't even think about a hashtag because I'm 46. Like, I'm not on Instagram. I mean, you could be flipping deals on Instagram just with a hashtag. I yeah. mean, you're so, you're so advanced. I'm, I'm excited, uh, you know, that you're willing to share your knowledge and, you know, kind of be an AKA consultant, no guru, and help people. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so now, so now you got a taste of the, you know, of the money of, of sorts, right? So you, you're yeah. like, this is an easy game. I could outwork people. So then, so you started virtually, I mean, you started wholesaling down and dirty in Phoenix. Um, what, what's the margins? Let's, let's go through some numbers and then, then we're going to talk about why did you scale outside of Phoenix, uh, which I think is big balls. I mean, because you know, I'm in Oklahoma city, I, you know, I, it's, it's hard. I, I can't wrap my mind around who's going to go to closing. You know, who, who yeah. how, make sure the fund, you know, you got it. There's a lot of nuances of holding hands of, of rookie investors and making sure that they're funded. But let's just, let's dial in. What just, let's walk us through like, what's a typical deal. I, I know I saw your guys as HUDs. I'm pretty impressed. Um, I mean, like the highest assignment fee I ever got was 60 G's and I had to give 10. I didn't have to, but I gave 10 to my bird dog to make that happen. Wow. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but I just saw one HUD and I was like, okay, so you, you tell me a typical, cause like, I mean, those numbers, those numbers, 60 and 30,000 in Oklahoma city is like a really good flipper. Like someone that's like buying a deal, like a $250,000 house for a hundred, putting 50 in it and making, you know, we eat those for breakfast, bro. Those I know. <laughs> so, give it, so is it just a Phoenix market? Cause I know you guys, I saw the deals in Oklahoma city in Tulsa. I mean, you're getting them on a contract for 35, 50. There ain't no thirty thousand dollar profit on a fifty thousand dollar house. Yeah. <laughs> so, so give us this, give us some scope, um, and then we'll go into, you know, how you know why'd you move to new markets and why'd you pick these markets? Because I'm just fascinated by that, and then we'll go into whatever. And then Chris, we're gonna have to re-interview you on another day because you just you, you let's, quiet. let's just re <laughs> you quiet. Let's so, just, like, let's, so, tell me a typical deal. Like right now, I mean, two thousand February, uh, twenty twenty, like. You, you, what what's a house that you get you get a phone call that comes in and what what do they want and what's the margins yeah so Perfect. we have the callers we have the callers answering the the calls right we have a call center and then they're pre-qualifying the lease so they're going through list of you know like all these lists that we buy these data lists you know pre-foreclosure tax defaults probate um equity list 
and they're just calling these leads and we're sending RVMs and SMS and those calls are routed back to the call center and they're made more priority than the ones that are there. Like, let's say they're calling and they get inbound calls. They're going to answer the inbound calls because they're more pre-screened. When we're sending RVMs, they're coming what back. Mean, what do you mean by RVMs? Ringless voicemails. Okay. So you like yeah. slide out, you just drop in messages on them. Hey, I want to buy your house. Now this, yeah. call, this call center, is it a local call center? Are you, I mean, using virtual assistants? Virtual. Yeah. It's like, virtual. And are they American? Do they, do they have accents? They're, they're in Mexico and we have Philippine call callers too. Um, okay. The Mexico call center is like right on the border of Phoenix. You no, know, we're right next to Mexico. So they're like speak fluent English because they were people that, with the school, that used they to taught it in school, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's the good thing. They don't have much accent. So how much volume and do you do the same uh, system in every market? So, I mean, you drop in how many thousands of voicemails and text messages and that's your main source of marketing. You don't do direct mail, bandit signs. You don't do the normal or do you do all of it? What, what do you we, use to market? Yeah. So we do uh, cold calling, RVM, SMS. Um, we're doing Facebook ads and we have a website, um, direct mail. We, ha we have done it before, but we haven't touched up on it. Um, so we're sending about all together since we, we use a different system than slide out. It's way cheaper to, uh, send the RVMs and SMS okay. very cheap. So all together, we're probably spending uh, around 30 to 35 grand in marketing. Um, per market with, or just overall, all, all of it. Oh, overall okay yeah and then so you're in just, seven markets so roughly six thousand five thousand dollars per market yeah around there okay yeah and then we're just and what is so you have you, do you guys have matrix like do you quantify like i i drop five thousand dollars a month in marketing and how many how many calls do you get and what's your conversion rate from there yeah so we check all that we make sure that we use this system called Podio and we make sure we route each number to be connected. Like let's say we're sending RVMs and OKC, we have a separate number to be able to track how many calls we're getting. Sure. And then track like, okay, where did this lead come from off of what list? So then we're seeing what list is performing better in each market to be able to Test hit it. that list multiple times. And of course, check our conversion. So overall, like what, what's how many call, I mean, how many deals do you get when you drop $5,000 in marketing in that market? Like, and of course this is a full-time gig for you guys, but like give us some perspective, some numbers so we can get an idea. We're, we're getting about a month. We're probably getting like, um, you know, about 2000 leads to 3000 leads a month. But then out of those, it just varies, you know, because we, we're getting like about 25 to 20 contracts. But, you know, when there's those properties that you have to put a memorandum, there's title liens, Probate. all that stuff um, involved. So those are what the numbers are looking like. And it all varies, you know, like for RPM, uh, the cost per lead is a bit higher. And then for cold calling, it's, it's a bit um, lower. And so is SMS. So we we just track all that to be able to tell what's working. And every market is a bit different. Like one month, you know, RVM can be working for OKC or cold client can be working for Phoenix and certain lists. So we're, we're looking into that stuff too. And sometimes, you know, we, we're looking at our profitability. So we're able to pivot and see like, okay, OKC is not performing this month. Let's move those marketing dollars to the hot market this month. That is Dallas, Texas or that's Phoenix or, you know. So what, what made you guys decide to leave your market? I mean, was it like, this is like, I'm not going to answer that. You tell me you're doing well in Phoenix, obviously. I mean, is it, was it oversaturated? Did you hit a wall and you're like, Hey, I'm going to yeah. do this virtually. Like what, what yeah, we, why? We, we felt that, um, you know, at that point we were kind of capped I and, mean, you know, we were just like, we were in our backyard. We were making, we're also about eight good deals, seven to eight deals. And we're like, you know what? We need more deals. You know, let's, let's look out there. Let's, let's see how we can go to other markets. And 
and just that's that's what made us go into other markets pretty much more adding more source of income if that's what you call it um, sure was it a progressive like you went to one market and then you or did you just made a decision and how'd you i mean how, what kind of board meeting do you have hey uh, what, hey hey chris yo frank let's let's just try oklahoma city and why in the world would you be in oklahoma city i mean is there data to to warrant that i mean dallas obviously houston obviously texas in general is on super fire and it's a a lot more leads what what made what made you pick a market my brother's yeah. a genius in that in that field so i'll let him speak up on that he okay knows. come on chris bring it yeah. on yeah so so the reason we picked out you know uh we were already going into like the hottest market which was phoenix um tucson and then these texas ones and las vegas is of course another hot one we just we we hadn't picked a market where it was kind of like okc where it was lower price point mm -hmm. and where we can pick up deals for cheaper so we were thinking like okay we're already doing this in a really hot market so let's try a market like okc um because we wanted to not only come across because we come across multiple deals that are you know like we we picked up a property that's worth 130 and we picked it up for like 20 grand um mm -hmm. and it's in livable condition so then we're thinking like what if we do this in okc and then we check the the data on uh realtor.com you know there's free data zillow the turnover rate and we just decided okc would be one of the markets since it's lower price point, it was a market we hadn't gone into and we wanted to test something new. So we wanted to see, you know, we're already having success in these markets. Let's go into OKC, it's lower price point. It might be more volume and mm. we, we can also, you know, pick up some, some properties ourselves. Like I know you've been telling about building a rental portfolio, so. Yeah, yeah. or, you know, you can sell them to me. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Now you guys are Spanish, right? And we speak Spanish, I'm assuming. Um, yeah. Do you guys use that as a tool at all? Is that is that advantageous for you? At the um, I know I sell a lot of, to Hispanic people. Um, at, at the beginning, it was it was like an advantage, but then we didn't let it, how can you say, uh, you know, cap us. And it's like, because you really don't, because now we don't even talk to homeowners and buyers. So we have our people. And for example, our Dispo guy, he doesn't speak Spanish, but... It does help us in a way, you know, but it's not something that keeps you from making more more money. Okay, I was yeah. just curious. I mean, yeah. now what's your unique selling position? What makes you guys the best wholesalers in the world? Like, and what? I mean, is it grit? What, can you can you can you tell me a reason why you're successful? Really? Tell me why you're successful. Because yeah. we don't think uh, you know we had that conversation there at the at the summit. It relationships is not about making you know me being uh was being mature already in business and knowing that it's it's all relationship is not like taking that check and you don't get rich out of one so if you screw up an investor and try to squeeze the most out of it and mm -hmm. leave that thing, he's not going to come and buy from you again you screwed him and, and you're done you know so but if you leave meat on the bone and, and then you let him make his money you make your money it's all relationships man he'll keep coming back and dude I, I, that's why we're homies because yeah. in Oklahoma city, it's not like that. I mean, people are killing each other over $500 and, and, or, or people are just skipping over me because they're chasing some of the money, some other investor that's never going to be, I've been doing this for 20 years, but I'd learned how to wholesale 15 years ago. You just get five people to build a relationship with and that you just keep feeding those five people and you're going to do very well as a wholesaler and not try to squeeze every dollar or try to take advantage of a new person, just keep growing your business yeah. and treat it like a business, exactly. right? Vol volume and turning deals. Like, you know, I, if it, if I, I think you're a bad wholesaler, if you got to advertise, you, you, I, I mean, I know people are going to cringe and hear me. I mean, I don't think I need to put it on Facebook. I mean, all my wholesale deals, no one knows that I'm doing them because people are buying them because I'm leaving meat on the bone. I mean, yeah. the, there's so many emails that I get that, this is a wholesale deal, but after I put the rehab in, you run the simple mathematics, I'm paying retail. How is that a wholesale deal? Like <laughs> you buy it at Alibaba for a dollar, you sell it for $10, there's $9 of margin, you got, you know, you got shipping, you got staff. Okay, I'm, I'm in this deal for $4, $5. It should be no less than $5. I'm doubling and I'm taking all the risk. Yeah, you're taking the risk because you're advertising marketing, 
but I'm taking the risk too by ponying up, guaranteeing that I'm going to cash, guarantee I'm going to show up. And if I burn you, absolutely, you should cut my head off and vice exactly. versa. But I, I, I can't, I'm excited that you guys are actually willing to help and teach people, you know, because I think it's a very basic, simple principle of business. I think a lot of people, because it's a low barrier of entry, hey, I could be yeah. a wholesaler because I put out <laughs> some bandit signs. It cost me $120 because I went to dirt, dirt, dirt cheap signs and that's it. Yeah. There's more to it. So, all right, let's get, I mean, I, dude, we need, we can go on for hours with you cats. Uh, and you know, my next question is wh where, what's your, where's this going? Where's, where's your goals? And I know that you already have a heart and you've made a lot of money already and you have a heart to give back. Do you want to wholesale like every city, every state Do you want to, I mean, I know you've already sold your detail business one time. I yeah. mean, I, en I enjoy selling businesses. I think that's, it's been a very fun process to, and then seeing that business grow. Back to the detail business. Fun, man. Did, did that detail business, did it, are they bigger now since you sold it to them? Or are they out of business? Tell me about that. Tell you the truth, I wouldn't be able to know. I just sold it, you know, never, never touched up on it. And, and I, I sold, I sold probably most of the stuff together. One whole series. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to know, man. I don't know. where It would just be fascinating. Cause like, I realized, and you guys are young, you'll, this is some, some advice. When I, when I sold, when I, when the two businesses, actually I sold three businesses, but when I sold it, I was at my capacity. And there's mm -hmm. going to be a time in your guys' life that you're going to, you can, like you did, you, you got to Phoenix and you're like, okay, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go, I'm going to, you know, you're going to have, you're going to capacity, you're going to hit capacity, but it's really cool to see it when you sell it and you get paid and then they take it to the next level. You know, yeah. sometimes you get tired, sometimes you get burned out. What, what level? Obviously, you're living your dream. Are you living your dream? We are, man. Because that was yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, you're living a fast lane life. I mean, now you got to make it. You guys, I know I was all over Chris. I mean, Chris probably hates my guts because I was just beating that yeah. dude up. Frank, while you were over there fooling around, <laughs> I was like, I was stabbing him. I'm like, you're dumb. You should not be a wholesaler. You need to be buying some assets. <laughs> he was like, why? <laughs> I'm 22. I want to buy a car. So. <laughs> No, man, I, I go back, you know, it's it's definitely good. It's funny, yeah, because if you check out my, my past uh, Instagram stories, so I posted, hey, guys, i sorry to break it down to you guys. Wholesaling is a very, 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 very low entry level. So if you guys, you know, uh, sorry about that, man. man you, know, you, you know, there's a silent button, homie, like, I, you know, yeah. like you can hit that thing like real fast. I like you probably it. got an iPhone. That's probably where you went wrong. This little switch on the side. Everything's connected. <laughs> it's on my laptop, so okay. sorry about that. But no, come on. Where I'm going, it's like wholesaling is a very, very low entry level, man. It, it violates a lot of rules that we go by, and you know them same rules. You know, low entry level, which means anybody can get into it. Anybody who comes into your company, they hear gurus, they hear mentors, and they're like they think they can do it and they leave right within a few mm -hmm. months. So we're still doing wholesaling. We're never gonna leave real estate alone because that's where you. You, you stash your cash and, you know, you protect that and you buy hard assets. It taught us how to scale a business, how to take a, a, a business, how to become a hustler to becoming a, a, a business owner and now an entrepreneur, right? Right. So looking for those solutions. So it really, we're really glad of that. But, you know, we're I mean, you got What's your dream? Do you, you want to own a, a salon? Like no. my man cuts, cuts hair? You know? <laughs> like, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I mean, do you want to own a dealership? I mean, that are I, mean, you I mean, obviously you, you are a born entrepreneur. I mean, God blessed you with this entrepreneurial gift. What, you know, like I have a dream. I, I want to own a vegan restaurant. I mean, I know I'm not <laughs> vegan because of MJ. I was vegan before that dude. But the reality <laughs> is like, what, let's, let's just be human here. I mean, what, what's your dream? Like, where do you, I mean, you can't be wholesaling forever because it's a job. It, yeah, it, I mean, I, you can put general managers in place. It's, it, it's. And the market's going to change. And like if Bernie Sanders gets in this deal, okay, and I hate politics, <laughs> but it, I mean, this dude's entitled. I mean, it's going to be free rent everywhere. It's going to be we're, free, free houses everywhere. You know, free college, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to have to pick those up, man. We're gonna have to <laughs> you're going to have to have a plan. What's your plan, y'all? Like what? Like, I know you're young. So plan? Yeah. Like, I mean, like, you're going to wholesale everywhere. I mean, you know, do you Utah. Know. No, I mean, we want to, we're we want to, sales, but we're going to focus only on the markets that are the strongest markets. And we've built relationships and people know us. And like you said, like people who I could just text a deal, they buy it. Yeah. 
we're going to use Smart. wholesaling to fund our new projects, our service-based businesses that are needs. Because I study Warren Buffett, and, and I like what he says, focus on needs, need, which is like cement, iron, stuff like that. So we're thinking at a higher level and focusing on stuff like that that is never going to run out, whether the the company is down, we still need asphalt. We need. We still need to repair the roads. We still need iron. We those needs. You know, commodities. Lithium batteries. Yeah. Rechargeable yeah. batteries. So, copper. Yeah. Gold. Gold. All that stuff. Exactly. And and we're, and we're definitely gonna buy assets as we go. You know, we want to buy uh apartments and self storage deals. Okay. For sure. I'm gonna ride you, Chris, man. I'm telling you, man. I'm, you know, I'm. <laughs> y'all need to be buy stop buying the cars. You know, the flashy flash, and 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 buy some assets. All right, so we're gonna wrap this up. So, what would you do differently now? To, you know, 22, right? 22, right, homie? Is Chris? Is that yeah. right? Okay, yeah. 22 and 29. Uh, it's great that you guys are working together, and you guys seem like you got this great chemistry. Uh, with a short amount of time that I hung out with you guys, I think that's that's a blessing. I, I you know I hope my children have that same dynamic, uh, willing to work together. I know you guys probably have some conflicts here and there, but what would you have done differently? Um, would you have started earlier, later? Um, you know, well, and what advice would you give somebody today? Um, and they're, they're, they listen to this, they don't know you. What would you tell them? My big, I don't know if you want you. My biggest advice. I know my brother has his advice, but my advice is focus. Know that everything on social media is bullshit. <laughs> know that everything's media is bullshit. Stop chasing what one guy's doing is working for him. And whenever you hop into a business, make sure it's scalable, it gives you freedom, and it has an exit strategy. Come on. That's Come on, I mean. man. It's like Fast Lane yeah. Part 2. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Man. There you go. Exactly. I'm telling you, man, and you need to write a book, man. Yeah, we need to, but why yeah, not? The duo, the duo. Hell Dudes, yeah. Dudes. <laughs> Those both. Yeah. I think, I think. How my, about you, man? My, my advice would be um, to really focus whatever you're going to do, focus on it for like three months because a lot of people, you know, bail out right one month. Oh, it's not working. Like when I started call, cold calling, I didn't get a deal right away. I kept cold calling. I was asking people the wrong questions about like, oh, when's the roof been? What type of materials the roof made? Uh, when's the year bill to sellers? And sellers were getting mad and hang up on me. I didn't even know what I was asking. I didn't have no script. I was just calling. Mm -hmm. And you, you, there's so much free information on YouTube, even our YouTube channel, that you can literally go in there, start with the budget, and just stick to it for three months. Whatever it is you do, whatever business, you got to stick to it and go all in because you're not going to see results, you know, right away. You, you got to be able to tell, oh, yes, it didn't work, and then pivot within the three months. It's not going to, you know, pop out right away within one month that you're going to find out if it works or not. You know, I, I hung out with some young folks, um, and that's a question I think we should tell them or an answer. How long did it take for you to, to materialize this or the belief in yourself, like, hey, this is a real deal. When, yeah. when was that? When was, you know, Frank, because since you're the, the driver of sorts, when was the epiphany like, hey, this is the real deal? Like when you got an office space or when you're yeah. like, or you got a full time VA and you like negotiating, hey, I'm going to guarantee you, you know, $1,000 a month to run my, all my VAs or, you know, do you remember that moment and how long were you in the game for that yeah. to materialize? We to when was it? When did it feel real that it's like, oh shoot, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, like, like you're paying your taxes now. <laughs> like, before yeah. you, you know, you're under the ground, you could be a student, you know, like, <laughs> like but, you could be a student, like Chris, you got a long, you could still kind of flounder around, and you know, <laughs> um, you don't have to go to college, but you could be a student in the IRS's eyes of sorts. But when you know, like, this is a real business, real revenues coming in, and like, this is where I want to, where I want to go. How long, how long were you doing it? I know that, you know, Frank, you, you've been up and down, like, right. You were working hard. Uh, that didn't work. You pivoted, you did e-commerce, then you went to construction, then you went to the, to the hustle, to the, to the detail business. I, I, I you, you have a lot, you remind me of, of a lot of myself, but when you got into this real estate thing, was it three months? I mean, I, I agree with you, Chris, right on point. You got to give it three months, all out balls out and then reevaluate. That's my new rule. Three months, six months, three months, but, you know, but, for you, you know, for you guys, when it was like, hey, this is, this is, hey, we're going to, we're going to do our YouTube channel. Like, 
you know, how many years were you doing it? And like, this is the real deal. We're in for, we're in all, all way, all the whole way. When, when did that happen? How many years did it take you to get there? We've been month? doing it for five years. First three years was learning experience. It took us three years. Like, you know, counts were, were drafting, you know, I would get a good month, invest everything. And I was broke and then, you know, redo it again, go out, get sales. So I did been doing real estate for, for five years, wholesaling when, when it, it brought our attention. You know what? This is the real deal. It was two years ago. Okay. My retail side, retail team was a year ago because I wasn't really putting much time. And now we're building a name out of it. People know us. We're on the radio constantly. We're building a brand. So, you know, it took us three years before we were like, oh, shoot, you know. This and that was like down and dirty, right? Three years full on, 80 hours a week. Yeah. No, no life. No uh, life. No, no life. Okay. It's, yeah. People thought I was a loser. Like, oh, you don't like party. You don't like going over here. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm just, you man, your parents, man, I know they're old school, traditional, you know, uh -huh. they, they, they've got, they don't tell you, but they love you, man. Let me tell you, they yeah. love you, you know, yeah. they, yeah. they down and deep. They, they don't say it like that. Cause I know Hispanic <laughs> folks, they just real, real serious. But they, real they serious. your dad is like, that's my boys. That's my boys. Uh -huh. today, until today, this is a story I tell until today. I know my dad loves us, but he has he hasn't gave me gave us a hug in my life. and you know what? I'm proud of you guys. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. one day I'll, when I get back to Phoenix, you know, bring your dad. You should bring your dad to the fast yeah. line for dinner or something. And you know, yeah, yeah for sure, you, man. Next year, y'all need to speak. You know, make sure you get a hold of MJ. So let's talk about what you know. Phase two, right? So three years, you grinded it out. Two years, you kind of formulating your systems. Mm -hmm. Hey, this works. We scaled it. Now we're in seven markets, eight markets. I don't know. You wrapped off so many markets. I'm so confused. <laughs> and then you got this YouTube channel called Whole Flips, W-H-O-L-E-F-L-I-P-S. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, go to YouTube in the search bar, type W-H-O-L-E, Whole Flips, and you'll run into my homies. So what, what's going on there? What, why did you do this? And there, there's just everywhere, every time I get on Facebook, there's some effing guru, you know, pay me 2000 <laughs> And I'm going to make you a millionaire. You know, you know what I'm talking about? That's why I don't even want to be a guru. Like I'm out like savvy, you know, bye. But yeah, <laughs> I mean, you guys got it. You got, you're young. You got You got, a, you got Instagram followers. What, what's, what's going on and what are you trying to do? And are you trying to give back? Are you trying to scale through this process? What's, what's your motive there? And, and tell, you know, someone just heard you for the first time and explain to them, you know, why should I go to your YouTube channel? Yeah, so we want to provide as much free information, like Frank said, as we can, you know, because we knew when we were starting out, there was information, but there was a lot of people talking. But I just stuck to one thing, which was cold calling and just got deals, you know, out of that way. And how you said, you know, had those started building that trust. Frank was dispositioning. I was locking up the deals. And it's just um, we're looking at the whole flips to be able to provide the people with the right information mm. and not, you know, guide them the wrong way but provide them with the systems that we're using to be able to duplicate the success that we're having okay yeah awesome. man you just see so many people jumping into the game with the correct with the wrong information thinking you can make money not seeing this this as a business going all in and, and fucking like ruining their lives man you know pulling out credit cards you know uh, you know, they, they hear the grant card. I was like, just swipe your credit card. Doesn't matter. Put your credit card and you'll make it back. Dude, you don't know how long and how hard it is for somebody out here who are making 12 bucks an hour to recover those 5,000 that you just told them to go put on that credit card. Yes, they can make it on a wholesale deal, but they, they, they still got taxes. They still got to pay their VAs. They still got to pay data. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a real business. Yeah, and I think I think you're onto something, Frank. I think you'd be a great mentor to a lot of people because your your mindset's already there. I want I want to dial in a little bit more. There's a guy that I've been trying to help out, and he's just been working in the wrong direction, right? I mean, that's you got to do the right things. I mean, sometimes it's hard. Like you got to make calls, and mm -hmm. you know, for a certain length of time, I think a lot of people just they buy banded signs and they put them on the wrong streets, or they put them in the wrong area. They're not strategic about it. They're just willy nilly about it. And I think what you're trying to say, and I, I hope that these listeners that you get this sit down, get with a mentor or at least someone and write a plan and not just, just throw five G's down on some marketing when you don't even have a system in place. You don't even have a script. And that's cool for Chris because that's how he got burned and that's how we learned and he wanted to become better. 
But the reality is, I think a lot of young people just think, okay, it's this easy, so let me just go do it. But it's really not that easy, and it just takes a plan and a purpose and why you're doing it. Exactly. And commitment. Yeah. All right, All right man, we're going to leave. What other words you guys have to say? So make sure, ladies and gentlemen, go to Whole Flips. Right, you guys got a website. You got Instagram, Instagram forward slash official Franco Milan, Milan, my bad, M I L M A N. And then Chris, what's yours? It's right Mine is uh, at Chris Milan B. Oh, yeah, there it is. Chris C H R I S M I L N A N, Milan M I L A N B. I'll have the links in the description for you cats. I really appreciate your time, man. And, Appreciate uh, it, man. I'm gonna be following y'all, making sure you know, see what you're doing, buying assets, especially Chris. Every, every year from here on in, I'm gonna, yeah. be, I'm gonna be riding you like a donkey, donkey, donkey. All right, all right, man. Like I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna you, I'm gonna tell you some deals. I'm gonna tell you some deals. No hey, man, I'm ready. I'm I, I looked at those two that you sent me. I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, all right. I'm ready. Last all right. Word, Thanks. Said, um, I don't want to sound like a guru mentor either, but back what you said. Uh, why do we do do consulting? If you guys are interested. We're working on our website. Reach out through us through through Instagram, and we'll be more than happy to guide you through the right process. It's a it's a dirty world out there. Mm, be careful cool. who you listen to. Make sure they have some success. They show some huds, like Chris did. You know, pulled out the huds. Make yep. sure they have some real success. You know? I called them out, ladies and gentlemen. Like I don't just put anybody on the radio show because they said they sexy and they cool. No, I was like, <laughs> all right, buddy. Let me see. And I, I saw him. You know, I'm like, we were trading HUDs, like, like we're trading yeah. cards. <laughs> let me show you my HUD. <laughs> okay, let me show you. We should, we should have like a speed dating HUD dating. <laughs> All right, y'all. I appreciate All y'all. Right, have you back on in, you know, a couple months. See, you know, see what new markets and, and bring me the deals. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Let's get it, man. All right, y'all. See you. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks, man. Let's get it. Broke? Just tired of making chump change? Learn how to improve your income and build wealth with real estate investing. Investor Weekend is here to help you do just that. Join us for a powerful, knowledge-packed weekend that is bound to enlarge your real estate investments. What can you expect to get from the Investor Weekend? Hear great national and local real estate investors. Learn how to buy rental property, build wealth, and connect with other like-minded people for funding, partnerships, and even hot deals. Whether you're a seasoned investor or never purchased a property before, you don't want to miss the Investor Weekend. Right now, only $98. Go to www.investorweekend.com now to register or to find out more. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets.